Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benuni. you're watching Israeli News Live. Enoch's doomsday prophecy may allude to Planet X and the two witnesses. I realize, guys, this seems like a far-fetched type of title to begin a broadcast, and it is a prophetic insight here. And I know that there are some people also that do not believe that the Book of Enoch is an inspired work. But there is a lot of evidence that supports that it is. One of the main reasons, though, why the Jewish people of today do not accept it as an inspired work of God is because there's so many um, illusions there in the book of Enoch that clearly identify Yeshua to be the Messiah. And, uh, and of course, the Ethiopic version that we have today uh, was actually believed to be written around the 7th century. But after the... Uh, discovery at the Qumran community and finding all the different fragments for the book of Enoch and how accurate they were in comparison to that of the Ethiopic version of the book of Enoch and how that it was part of the biblical library at Qumran. Now there's been some new suggestions that yes, this indeed is a very authentic book. Uh, and as anything is, I would always say, when you're dealing with something outside of canon, I cannot 100% authenticate that of its full accuracy. There are things that make me wonder, like the size of the giants, you know, did someone do a typographical error or something like that? But nonetheless, I do look for those clues, for that common thread that matches the Bible. And as strange as this title of this broadcast may sound, we're going to look at this very carefully, not from the conspiracy theory point uh, of view, but from a biblical point. Looking from our own canon, from the book of Revelation, as well as the book of Matthew, as well as the scientific evidence that is out there in comparison to what I discovered in the book of Enoch in chapter 80. Now, keep in mind, there are more. there is more than one trans... Uh, one uh, version of this out there, and I am using the Lost Books of the Bible version by Joseph B. Lumpkin. So just so you're aware of that, uh, you can, uh, it, is, it is a little different than some of the ones you find online as far as the English translation. I do think it's, a, it's probably the most accurate that, that, that I can find available in English. But that, there again, that would be to an opinion. But I have looked at both versions that are available just to be sure and they still, the, the, still the consensus of what is written there is pretty much the same. Anyway, it doesn't seem to change the nature of what's there. Let's get started in this then, guys. The numerous theories of the coming Planet X or Nibiru, this is something I want to start off with, has gave way to all sorts of conspiracy theories. Planet X caused Noah's flood. Now, I'm not saying that these things are not true. I'm just showing you how the theories that are, that are, that are out there. The plagues of Egypt were caused by the return of Planet X. At the same time, you can keep this simultaneously with the, also the terminology of Nibiru. Uh, another one is the Anaki, the gods of aliens are coming, are going to return in some beliefs as well. Uh, aliens have come to keep man from destroying the planet. Another conspiracy theory. Planet X will bring God's wrath and yet even another theory. However, the evidence it has been rejected. Uh, excuse me. However, the evidence, as far as for a planet X, has been rejected as pseudoscience and internet hoax by astronomers and planetary scientists. But you know that's kind of an underhanded account because scientists and astronomers of like have been looking for a planet X for many, many years, especially back in the uh, early 80s when Ronald Reagan was then president. And there are some people out there like Gil Broussard who argue, argue emphatically that it's been a cover-up ever since, uh, that they did, dis they did find planet X and they're just trying to hide it from the public. Again, another conspiracy theory. Uh, as far as that goes. But I wanted to examine this from something that I stumbled across as I've been reading through the book of Enoch, trying to get a better understanding of what uh, Enoch had to say in the writings that, that they uh, have presented that are, like I said, very almost identical to that of Qumran. Uh, and that's been, been 
spoken by many scholars that have worked on the Qumran scrolls, scrolls the Israeli scholars. In fact, the, the lady that I shared some information with you the other day, she's another one that, that says this, that they are almost identical in, uh, in, in the writings from Qumran uh, to that of the Ethiopian Ethiopic copies. So let's get started here. Enoch chapter 8, we're going to look at verses 1 through 8, starting with verses 1 through 4, just to get an idea. Pay attention to the things that I have highlighted in yellow. If you're able to see this on your screen, I sure hope you can. In those days the angel uh, Uriel answered and said to me, Behold, I have shown you everything, Enoch, and I have revealed everything to you, that you should see this sun and this moon and the leaders of the stars of heavens, excuse me, heaven, and all those who turn them, their tasks, their times, and departures. Verse 2, And in the days of the sinners, the years shall be shortened, and their seed shall be tardy in their lands and fields, and things of the, on the earth shall alter and will not appear in their time, and rain shall be kept back, and heaven shall withhold it. And in those times the fruits of the earth shall be backward and, not, and shall not grow in their time. And the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time. Verse 4, And the moon shall change and alter her customs and not appear at her time. Now, some of these things have not happened as of yet. Okay, but just keep it in mind. We're seeing these type things that are being suggested by Enoch that are going to happen. All right, let's get to verse 5. In those days the sun shall be seen and shall journey in the evening on the extremity of the great chariot in the west and shall shine before bright shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light and many rulers of the stars stars shall transgress their customary order and they and these shall alter their orbits and task and not appear at the seasons prescribed to them the whole order of the stars will be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them, and they shall be altered from all their ways. They shall err and take them to be gods, and evil shall be multiplied on them, and punishment shall come upon them uh, as to destroy all. Now, I can imagine here from verses 5 to 8, some of you have already picked up yourself, even in verses 1 to 4, just some of the things that are definitely, clearly, biblical prophecy. But let's begin to break this down now. From Enoch chapter 80, verse 2, And their seed shall be tardy in their lands and the fields, and all things on the earth shall alter and will not appear in their time. Now, this is from the article Climate Change Already Affecting Food Supply by the UN published in the, uh, uh, the online source, The Guardian, on March 31st, 2014. Now, keep in mind, before I start bringing this up, I know there's a big issue about global warming. Climate change, as the President uh, Obama has talked about, the, the conspiracies about this here, that this is all just a hoax, it's just to make money, uh, it's not caused by gas emissions and things of that nature. I agree. I agree with that. But to say that there's not been a drastic climate change going on uh, throughout the earth and it's going to no doubt really come up rapidly in the near future, now that's a different story altogether. And there's a lot of different people out there that have been bringing this forward, again, though, as conspiracy theories. But nonetheless, even from what excuse they're using for the truth of global warming, uh, doesn't mean that it's, that, well, let me put it like this. Even though we, we are seeing the fabrications of what they're saying is causing the climate change, it's not to say that climate change isn't really going to happen. And even like President Barack Obama made in one interview not too long ago, we've played it many times here on Israeli News Live, where he, he made the statements, what happens if suddenly those uh, places that have been known to be uh, uh, bread belts of the world suddenly they don't get rain and they don't produce anymore. What happens if suddenly we have sea rises surging six, seven, even eight feet suddenly, he says. So see, they are expecting something dramatic to happen. And Enoch seems to indicate the same thing. 
So let's look at this here. We looked at their seed shall be tardy in their lands and fields and all things on the earth shall alter and will not appear in their time. Now I think this is still dealing with something yet to come. But nonetheless, according to this article here, the scientists of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change found evidence of climate change far beyond thawing Arctic uh, permafrost and crumbling coral reefs on all continents and across the oceans. But it was the finding that climate change could threaten global food security that caught the attention of government officials from 115 countries who reviewed the report. All aspects of food security are potentially affected by climate change, the report said. The scientists said there was enough evidence to say for certain that climate change is affecting food production on the land and sea. Now, regardless of what their excuse is, they're starting to see that the climate change that is going on is already affecting the food supplies. And as you see by the picture, they act, this was the picture they use, the corn crop didn't do so well in this one particular area. Now, according to Enoch, things are going to become tardy. And, and Enoch is saying it because the stars are going to alter their orbits. Well, what's going to cause this alteration? Now, let's take a look at more here. This is from Brightening Sun is Warming the Earth, Harvard University, Gazette, uh, on their Gazette, November 6th of 1997. All right? Now, the, the scientist, by the way, that's, that speaks, there's two scientists. One, one of their names is, uh, oh gosh, I forget. Let's see, it's, it's Bolanus and Soon were the two scientists that work on there. The first one, <clears throat> Bolanus, is very people once you see her picture on the next screen there you'll know who she is many people I've seen her many times speaking but anyway she said this here from the Harvard University she is a professor there there are better explanations for global warming than air pollution two Harvard researchers say the sun is increasing in brightness and radiance changes in the sun can account for major climate changes on earth for the past 300 years including part of the recent surge of global warming claims Sally Bulinas, uh, an astronomer at Harvard's uh, Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. We're not saying that various solar activity account for all the global rise in temperatures that we are experiencing, cautions her CFA colleague. Uh, that's Mr. Uh, Soon there, Willie Soon, astrophysicist. But we believe these variations are the major driving force Heat trapping gases emitted by smokestacks and vehicles, the so-called greenhouse effect, appear to be secondary. So see, even some scientists are actually coming out and admitting the sun is warming up. Now, here's what's interesting. All right, this is again, same article. And this is here is Miss Bolanus, Sally, they call her. Uh, and remember, what, what did it say in Enoch verse five? The sun will come, all right? and shall shine more brightly than accords with the order of light. So if it shines more brightly, it's going to warm up things. Is that right? So Billinus and Soon base their ideas about the cause of global warming on irrefutable evidence that sunlight is getting stronger since the late 1970s. Interesting. Three sun watching satellites recording surprising changes in heat, ultraviolet radiation, and solar wind. The radiation alters the paths of winter storms. Solar winds affect cloudiness and rainfall. So again, we're looking at what Enoch says based on scientific facts that are that is at least accepted. That's not considered theory any longer at this point here. Let's continue on. All right, another one from verse six in Enoch. And many rulers of the stars shall transgress their customary order, and these shall alter their orbits. Now, it's already been believed by many of the conspiracy theorists out, theorists out there, uh, and, and I really hate to call them that. I hate calling people like Bob Fletcher and Gil Broussard. I believe that the men are accurate in what they're saying to some degree. I really do. I do believe, even like Gil Broussard, many people have pointed me to him from a biblical aspect where he speaks about wormwood and things of that nature there. Uh, Bob Fletcher as well. I've spoken to Bob uh, already. We want to have Bob on our program here. He's done a lot of investigation, congressional investigation work, and he's done a lot of work on this, and he brings out some powerful points 
proving that it is a cover-up about Planet X, starting back with Ronald Reagan in the early 80s, when he says they actually discovered it. He's spoken to it, he said he's seen it, his own, his own self, through the telescopes, etc. Uh, there's a lot of conspiracy about what the Catholic Church is doing with the Luciferian telescope. And of course, the Catholic Church, the Pope, has actually spoken about that they would greet the aliens and baptize them, etc. You have all kinds of things going on out there like that. But let's hear. Now let's take a look, though, at some, some astronomers that are actually speaking about the orbits already altering. All right, again, because Enoch says the stars shall transgress their customary order and these shall alter their orbits. Okay, uh, Batyagin and Brown inferred its presence from the peculiar clustering of six previously known objects that orbit beyond Neptune. Now they're talking about planet nine, as they call it. This is what they are saying. Uh, they, do, they do liken it to planet X because planet X has been the elusive planet that they've been trying to figure out for years. Where is it at? It must, something must exist because they see changes in the, in the orbit of, uh, you know, we can say planets, stars is really what they are, but it doesn't mean that they have to have burning heat or anything like that, all right? It's still, because when we look up into the sky, we can still see Jupiter and Venus, and it looks just like any other stars in the heaven. Their reflecting light is what they're doing. So whether or not you want to call them planets or stars or whatever the case may be, they, at the end of the day, they're still stars is what they are, but not stars in the typical idea that they're all a bunch of burning ball of fires out there. All right. Now, anyway, he says, uh, six previously known objects that orbit beyond Neptune, they say there's only a 0.007% chance or about one in 15,000 that the clustering could be a coincident. coincidence. Instead, they say a planet with the mass of 10 Earths has shepherded the six objects into their strange elliptical orbits. In other words, they've changed what they were. Now they're in elliptical orbits, tilted out of the plane of the solar system. They were, in the, they were in the solar system at one time, all right? Now he has joined the centuries-old search for a new planet. His method, because by the way, this guy here was uh, very much into the killing of planets, uh, saying that they're not planets. Uh, but anyway, he says, joined the centuries-old search for a new planet. His method inferring the existence of Planet X from his ghostly gravitational effects has a respectable track record. In 1846, for example, the French mathematician Urbain La Verrera predicted the existence of giant planet from irregularities in the orbit of Uranus. Now see, Uranus, this is, this is nothing unusual. This is real. All right. Astronomers at Berlin Observatory found the new planet Neptune where it was supposed to be sparking a media sensation. There's been many more scientists even since, uh, in, since in 1846 with the French mathematician Urbain that made this uh, statement as well. And again, notice the existence of giant planet from the irregularities in the orbit of Uranus. In other words, things are not moving the way they should. All right. Now, Enoch goes on, and many rulers of the stars shall transgress their customary order, these shall alter their orbits, right? Since then, a handful of other icy objects have turned up in similar orbits. By combining Sedna with the five other weirdos, as they call it, Brown says he has ruled out stars as the unseen influence. Only a planet could explain such strange orbits. Again, doesn't matter if you want to call it planet or star. To me, it's all one and the same. All right, in this regards here. Only, only could explain such strange orbits. Of his three major discoveries, Eris, Sedna, and now potentially Planet X, Brown says the last is the most sensational. Killing Pluto was fun, he says. Fin uh, finding Sedna was scientifically interesting, he says. But this one, this is head and shoulders above everything else. In other words, they're really looking for that Planet X, but then again, like Bob Fletcher says, they already know it's there. They've already seen it. Maybe they're just trying to break the ice with the public slowly. Who knows? Here's another catching thing, though, that really got my attention. And immediately when I read this, I knew exactly where this was coming from. They shall be altered from all their ways. They shall err and take them to be gods. Enoch chapter 80, verse 7. 
In other words, the people on the earth, because of this changing of the orbits and things and this, all this hype of an incoming planet X or Nibiru, which one you would ever want to call it, they're going to actually think them to be gods. And is this not the biggest hype going on about, I mean, I have never seen so many conspiracy theories about the Anakis and that they're returning. And it was, it was an advanced civilization of people and they were the ones that created us here on the earth and they're coming back to set us in order or the aliens or whatever you want to call them. But they're basically making it their gods. All right, now, give you a little idea behind that. The Anaki are major players in the paradigm making its way into popular folklore. Via the work of the late Zachariah Sitchin, an economist by education and profess profession, and the author of several best-selling books, including Genesis Revisited, that explore ancient mythology and the mysterious mag uh, megalithic ruins found around the globe. These various books also seek to demonstrate that there was in ancient times an extraterrestrial race that genetically manipulated mankind for various reasons. The Stitchin thesis, Stitchinism as it's called, now embraced by numerous other writers who have incorporated into their apparently a new worldview essentially asserts that these ancient Sumero-Babylonian gods, the Anaki, are aliens from the planet Nibiru, Sitchin's 12th planet as he calls it, which passes by the earth every 3,500 years or so, at which time they planet hop the earth and create mischief. Now, this is what is believed that caused Noah's flood. This is what is believed to even possibly happen during the time when Moses and Aaron were there and the, and the, the different plagues that struck Egypt. Uh, but definitely Noah's flood, they believed it knocked the earth off its axis, caused the heavens to break loose and everything else. Whereas this time, they're speaking about how that if, and this again, I'm just saying it theoretically, but if this truly is a planet X or Nibiru coming through, that it's going to spin the earth upside down. And Gil Broussard makes some very good points on this from a, from a biblical point that he uses. And then it, at that point there, it's, not only will it flip the earth upside down, but then uh, the United States will be caught in its tail of fire, bringing down the fire and brimstone on the earth. Who knows, okay? But anyway, the tendency to make the gods of old into real people or flesh and blood is not all new, dating to before the time of Greek historian Herodias in the 5th century BCE. Long way back, guys, long way back. This goes back. Nimrod, all of the ancient civilizations, etc., have all kinds of weird things. And what did Enoch say? They shall be altered from all their ways. Now he's speaking of the planets now, or the stars. He's speaking about the star system is going to be altered. And they shall err and take them to be gods. Now, I have wondered if Enoch wasn't actually referring to the possibility that this was during the destruction of the earth during Noah's time coming up. And this is what it was referring to. But then there's one other thing that caught my attention that made me think, if it is, then he must be alluding to both destructions at simultaneously. And this is why. Rain shall be kept back and heaven shall withhold it. Going back up to verse 2, see? When you back up, he said, rain shall be kept back and heaven shall withhold it. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if you remember what happened in Noah's day, it definitely the rain was not kept back and neither did heaven. It didn't withhold nothing. It, heaven fell down on the earth, according to what Enoch spoke, speaks about on that. So this clearly seems to be the evidence that we find in Revelation 11 of the two witnesses. And I will give power, verse 3, unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand and uh, 203 score days clothed with sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Now, what I find interesting is I don't believe that the words that are written in Revelation are necessarily in a, um, an, ex an exact order of events. Look at what it says again here. 
especially verse 5. Fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devour their enemies, and if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. They're going to be hurt. In fact, they're going to be killed. As we read on in Revelation, we find out that their dead bodies are laying there on the street, and after uh, three and a half days, I believe it is, then the, the God calls them back, and they stand up on there, and the enemies behold them, and then mighty earthquake strikes, 7,000 are killed, this may be where it speaks about there, the fire proceeds from their mouth. In other words, what does it mean when it says proceeds from their mouth? Not like they show you the pictures on the internet, they're blowing like fire dragons. I believe it's through the prophecy. I believe the thing is, is Moses and Elijah are going to prophesy and tell the people. You, do, you, you mess with this, you're going to find out God is going to pour fire and brimstone on this earth. I think that may be where that comes from. You know, who knows? But remember, Elijah was the one that called fire down and destroyed 50 of the soldiers when they came out there to take him down there to the king. And of course, we know that Moses was the one that closed the heavens and it didn't, or excuse me, uh, uh, Moses turned the water to blood and Elijah closed the heavens and it didn't rain in the days of his ministry. So again, we see their ministries re-impersonated once again. These have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. What does it say? Rain shall be kept back, and the heavens shall withhold it. See? And smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Remember what it also said? There will be every, this whole moving of the stars in the orbit causes all kinds of problems with crops and everything else on the earth. Plagues as often as they will. It doesn't end there, though. What else has happened? Yeshua, Jesus, that is, Matthew 24, verse 7 through 8, is all I'm looking at here. You can go back. There's many more that he speaks about things that would happen in this day here. But specifically, what does he say here in verse 7 and 8? For a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's pretty serious. They're the beginning of sorrow. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Right now, we do have the kingdom against kingdom, and we've already got the nation against nation. Russia backing Ukraine, while the United States was back, uh, excuse me, excuse me uh, the other way around, the United States was backing Ukraine in a coup to overthrow uh, the, the country, and Russia was backing the, the Russian people that were there. It was basically a war between Russia and the United States, even though it was fought by different people on the front lines there, uh, it still was nation against nation. And that battle hasn't stopped yet. Also, kingdom against kingdom. And the picture what you see here, this is part of where the Turks, their kingdom, because it's basically, Erdogan is a dictator, uh, and has entered into Syria. And they consider also Bashar al-Assad a dictator. Even the Saudis have turned against uh, uh, the Syrians as well. These are kingdoms against kingdoms. And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, let's take a look at some of these things here, especially in light of the earthquakes. And all of you guys already know the earthquakes are going nuts right now. Tom Lupshu, uh, he has a YouTube channel. This came out in April of 2016. It was sent to me, and this is really kind of what got this all started off, was I got his video. The name of it is called FEMA, High Level Briefing, Mega Earthquake Swarms Coming. Anyway, FEMA concerns as given to Mr. Lupshu from a retired Army colonel that had a family member present at that high level FEMA meeting. And I just kind of I kind of wrote down some of the main things that they were that he mentions in his video that they talk about in this high level FEMA meeting. They're expecting an escalation in natural disasters like nothing ever recorded in history, he states. This is Mr. Tom uh, Lupshu. And Tom, forgive me if I pronounce your name wrong, brother. I, I, did, I don't know for sure. Uh, number two, concerned about losing critical infrastructure. 
mentioned that there was a big concern of this. Number three, seismologists and geologists were at the meeting briefing after the Ecuador earthquakes. And what Tom says in this right here is that uh, they had gone before, before FEMA, trying to tell them the severity of what was coming on the earth, but no one wanted to really believe them. But after the Ecuadorian earthquake, with that string of earthquakes where we were seeing 6.5, 7.0, and even higher in Ecuador, I think 7.5, uh, suddenly in the ring of fire as it is around the Pacific rims uh, with the United States and with Japan and all that, all these huge earthquakes suddenly went all over the earth there for like a day or two really got everybody on edge. And so they called in the meeting again. He says seismologists and geologists were at the meeting, both government ones as well as independent ones. And they uh, uh, and, and this is what the outcome of the meeting was. He says they are concerned about water weight. Now that might sound kind of strange. In fact, Tom, even himself, when this came up, he said he didn't really know what that meant. Well, there's a video that I watched going back with uh, uh, Shepard uh, on Fox, Fox News, and they talked about the water weight off the coast of California, Oregon, and Washington, and what's the effects that will have. You'll get to hear that in just a few moments here. But that's where the water weight comes in. They're preparing for a major separation of land mass and the, and the mass migration to follow. Large earthquake swarms will be the new norm. That was the other issue. And what he said in that, Tom says that the, 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 uh, the retired army colonel stated to him, from his family member that was a part of the FEMA meeting, that instead of seeing the normal, usual high activity of 2.5 or 3.0 type earthquakes, they're going to suddenly go much higher, around 6.5 to 7.5 as the norm. And he said that would give the possibility of a mega quake of a 9.0 or greater to happen, which could do the devastation in a chain reaction. Now, before I go any further on this, let me state this here. I personally think we're still a few years out on this, because if there truly is a planet X that is going to cause the change of the orbit, and now Enoch doesn't say a planet X comes in that causes this change, so let me first clarify that. But he does speak about, and this was one thing that did catch my attention. If you go back and look at that in chapter 80, we translated the sun, but he said it comes in on the wings of a chariot. Now, let me just, maybe we, let me, uh, let me pull it up again. I'll pull it from the book. I, I can't show it on the screen because it's so far back. I don't want to create a confusion there. But let me just share that with you again, because that really got my attention as well is he says, all right, and in the days of the sinners, the, the, the years shall be shortened and their seed shall be tardy in the lands of the fields and the things on the earth shall alter and all shall not appear in their time. And the rain shall be kept back and the heavens shall withhold, withhold it. And those times of the fruits of the earth shall be backward and shall not grow in their time. And the fruits of the trees shall be withheld in their time. And the moon shall alter her customs and not appear at her time. And in those days the sun shall be seen and shall journey in the evening on the extremity of a great chariot in the west. Now I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said the word wings, but on the great chariot in the west. Now, I don't have the original to see this myself. Maybe the Qumran fragments may bear some light on that. I don't know. I didn't go back to research that during for this broadcast. But could it be... Because remember, some theorists are saying that Planet X or Nibiru is a dwarf star, which would be kind of like our sun. Could it be that? Maybe, maybe not. I can't really say. All right. So, but it's just a thought. And again, like I said, he never says that there's going to come a planet in here, but for some reason, everything alters its orbit. And they're seeing that a mysterious possible planet coming in could be what's causing the altering of the orbit. Or is it really that the sun itself heating up is what's causing these alterations? Don't really know, all right? But anyway, this is what Mr. Uh, Tom Lupshu said on his. Now let's take a look a little bit more on this type of information. 
Fears are the big one as seven major earthquakes strike Pacific region in just 96 hours. Express.co.uk on April the 20th of 2016 this year said at least 413 people have been killed in Ecuador's biggest earthquake in decades as a 7.8 magnitude quake struck off the Pacific coast at Saturday and was felt around the and uh, Andean nation and 16 million people causing panic as far away as the highland capital of uh, Quito. Vice President George Glass said, as well as leaving hundreds dead, more than 2,500 people were injured. Remember, Jesus said in Matthew 24, 7, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, it seems to me, especially from what we're seeing now and what they said with this FEMA meeting, according to what Tom shares, that if there's going to be an increased activity of larger earthquakes, that's what Jesus was speaking about. That's what I would take it as. Anyway, continuing on, earthquakes across the world, including powerful tremor in Ecuador and series of shakes in Japan, could herald a new mega quake, warns top scientist. All right, now I'm saying these things in to give you some of what the scientists are saying in regards to what Thomas said, Tom was saying that uh, his uh, retired colonel buddy was saying about the FEMA meeting. In other words, to give it some credence to back up that what he's saying is not just myth, but there is actually scientists saying this. This was on Mail Online, April 17th of 2016. And the other end of the infamous Ring of Fire, Ecuador was also a struggling after a major 7.8 quake, which hit last night, killing at least 77. Roger Billum, a seismologist at the University of Colorado, told the Daily Express the current conditions might trigger at least four earthquakes greater than 8.0 in magnitude. And by the way, remember the FEMA guy, he came out with his on the 18th of April. I believe, or something, something. So let me let me back up and see that real quick there. Um, I just have April 2016. I don't. I didn't actually put the date down. Maybe it was the 24th that he did that on. Nonetheless, the point is they were really getting nervous about this. Continuing on, mega quake could split continents and kill millions. Warns nuclear scientist Express.co.uk on October 15th of 2015. Now this guy here. The Russians use him as well as their, uh, 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 that's Ms. Dr. Maharan Kish, uh, who's a, d a developer of the uh, Mag Mag I think it's Magrov technology. Anyway, he says North of South America will split and a mega tsunamis could strike America and Asia, killing 40 million people in an earthquake described as imminent by a London educated nuclear engineer. Ahead of the drills, Mr. Maharan, Dr. Maharan Kish, uh, who studied nuclear engineering at University of London, released videos claiming a mega quake with the power to kill up to 20 million people on the west coast of the U.S. alone is on the cards. The events are unconnected, and while there is no scientific or official support for Dr. Keisha's claims, now that's what they said in this article here, but the question is, is that really so? All right, let's take a look then. Now, this is very interesting, and I know that uh, in the case here with Shepard Smith, he got extremely excited in this, in this article here. Uh, this was on the FEMA Insider Warns Worst Natural Disaster in History Coming, Your News Wire, on July 25th of 2015, just last year. In the video below, mainstream U.S. news anchor Shep, uh, Shepard Smith says that the worst natural disaster in the history of the nation is on its way, quoting the New Yorker magazine article where FEMA say that an earthquake of around 9.0 in magnitude is due any day now. Now, I th still, again, I think they're jumping to speculation as far as the timing, but let's take a listen at what Shepard Smith said in this interview. schools and one-third of all fire stations and perhaps the worst part of all of this these sorts of earthquakes happen at regular intervals in exactly this part of the world have forever on average according to seismologists about every 240 years so when was the last one of these these massive 9.2 or so earthquakes well the last one was more than 300 years ago the year 1700 it struck in the pacific northwest and sent a 600 foot wave of water all the way to japan so right now, on average, the Pacific Northwest is decades overdue for the really, really big one. He 
Keiichi Okaku is a uh, physicist and professor at City College of New York. This article is stunning. Is it, over, if it overstated in any way? No, the Cascadia Fault is an earthquake waiting to happen. We know it's going to happen with an energy 30 times, 30 times the maximum energy of the San Andreas Fault. So Hollywood has us brainwashed into thinking the big one is going to be in California. No, the Cascadia Fault would pack energy 30 times the energy that the San Andreas Fault can must. Now, I don't know how much of that you actually caught there. This particular fault line there is not the San Andreas Fault, but it's north of that. And uh, Professor Michio uh, Kaku says that it will carry 30 times the magnitude of what San Andreas Fault could, could muster out. They were speaking about, I think it was around the year 1700, how that the last time, according to sediment sedimentations that they have done studies on, that the earthquake struck there, that it sent a wall of water, a tsunami, 600 feet high that hit Japan. Now, that is startling in itself, but it didn't end there. A few months later, they come back again. Shepard Smith, you could tell in, in, this, in the first interview there, was scared to death. Now, I did, I did run across one article on YouTube not too long ago, and I wished I could have found it. I looked for it, but could not find it again. There was a man that owns uh, the company that does the, the food that, will, that lasts you for, for years and years and years and years. And he came on, and he said that there was a very well-known uh, news commentator that had contacted him, wouldn't say why, but he wanted to buy up everything he had and was willing to send even a truck out there to pick it up. You know, and he said he was very frantic about what was going on, but he said he had to have it. I have wondered if it wasn't Shepard Smith, just from the looks of this man. And he even makes a statement in there. He said, if I had friends and family, I would be telling them to move, is what I would tell them. Anyway, Professor Michio Kaku says, be prepared for months of canned goods and water. Now, that was kind of interesting as well, because in the FEMA video that was put out by Tom Upshore, uh, he stated that that's what they said there as well, that during the FEMA briefing, the retired colonel said to them that they need to have stock provisions for a minimum of three months and water. This is interesting, friends. All right, let's take a look at what he says here. We hear about the West Coast all the time. People in the Mid-South know about the New Madrid Fault, but there's one on the other side of Tennessee as well. Uh, yeah, we have to realize that we're going back into prehistory. I realized that the 1906... Uh, San Francisco earthquake was not the only one. The 1812 earthquake mm. uh, that hit New Madrid. Now, New York City, where we are right now, fortunately, does not have to worry because we're in the middle of a huge plate and the whole plate moves all at once. So the small earthquake that knocked out the uh, Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., that was filled all the way to Canada because the fault moves as one big plate. I want to talk about this that we have on the screen now that or did just a second ago. The the map that's really kind of weird looking. But the larger areas of pink, that's the areas of most concern. See the chart bottom right? The, the top color is the most concern if you live in that area. The bottom color. Now, let me go ahead and just to, to save time here. And actually earlier in the, when he shows the map where you could see it a little bit better there, he showed the, the dark red on the left there, and then also there closer to the Utah area, and as well as the New Madrid area uh, with the dark reds in there. In this particular interview that happened three months afterwards, they were talking about all these earthquakes simultaneously going off and causing possibly even a split into the earth there, uh, and of course a huge, huge... Uh, earthquake on the west coast and he speaks there about the the weight of the water that pushes down and when the earthquake came out and those two shells were to collide over that it will cause the ground to saturate and become like a quicksand so when i heard the guy speaking about their tom speaking about that water weight that's what made me think of that right there now uh, again, I do believe that we're still a few years out because I think these type of earthquakes are what is what's going to happen closer to the time of the two witnesses at the ending of their ministry. And that's just my speculation on it. But remember, 
Here's a really scary thing, though, and that is Jesus said these are the beginning of sorrows. So who knows what's really going to happen? Now, let's take a look at one other thing here. And by the way, I totally forgot to put it back into my presentation here, but Tom actually shows. Let me back up on this map here. Tom, uh, oh gosh, let's see if I can find it. I'm going to stop it again so you can see it on the good map. Okay, right here. You see the brighter reds there with the yellows circling around there. All right, you have the red one on the entire western coast. Then you have a red right there in the middle there, right on the edges of, say, Utah, Colorado, right in there. And then, of course, the one that's down there by Tennessee. When Tom was showing the map that the colonel showed him, and he was doing it on his own map, but he was trying to show, he said FEMA on two places on the, out there in the, mid, uh, uh, in the east there, like Tennessee, he showed how they were planning on moving in, uh, uh, what would you call it, uh, a way to receive all the catastrophe, uh, supplies and things of that nature there. It's also on the other side, but he said they stopped when they got down there at the Kansas. And then he shows how that they would do it out there in the Midwest. But everywhere he showed was around the same areas here that are on the map that Shepard uh, Smith was showing here. And that's what was so strange. He was showing that FEMA is getting backup supplies ready for the exact same places. And he also said that, the uh, Tom says, that, that FEMA was going to be preparing for a mass wave of migration after catastrophic events. Now, I know we have all kinds of ideas out there. We also have the ideas that there's going to be meltdown of the economy, there's gonna be civil war in the United States, all these type of things out there. And friends, I'm not belittling the possibility of any of these things because we are certainly at an hour of mega destruction. Now, let's look here again, and this is in verse eight of chapter 80. This is what Enoch surmises is the conclusion of this. He says, and evil shall be multiplied on them, and punishment shall come upon them as to destroy all. And again, remember, this is stated right after he speaks about how that when all these things are getting out of line and all the orbits are getting out of line, and let me just quote this again just for, for time's sake here for you, uh, but the thing that really got my attention uh, is when Enoch is actually saying that... Um, um, he goes in there and he says that the people are going to err. They're literally going to make a mistake at what is really happening. And the, because the stars are getting out of their orbit and the sun and the moon is, is, the sun is heating up and the moon is not keeping her customary orbit. And he said they're going to say that it's gods that are coming. You know, so this is the type of things that, that he says that is going to happen. And then... Um, I'm just trying to find it again. Please bear with me. And he said, The whole order of the stars shall be concealed from the sinners, and the thoughts of those on the earth shall err concerning them. So there is a lot of false ideas about what's going to happen. All right? Concern, and they shall be altered from all their ways, and they shall err and take them to be gods. And then he says, and evil shall be multiplied on them, and punishment shall come upon them as to destroy all. Friends, we're living in a very serious, serious, serious hour. And remember, Jesus said about the earthquakes, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. We do need your help, and I can't overstress that enough, in making these broadcasts possible. So if God places that on your heart, Go visit us at israelinewslive.org. I put .com on there. It's not right. It's israelinewslive.org. So my apology for that. And Or israelreturns.com. That is a .com, Israel Returns. But israelinewslive.org. You can see that at the end of the broadcast here as well as our address if you uh, are not able to give online. We thank you. And remember, your prayers mean more to me than anything else. That is the most important thing. As many of you write, say, we'd love to be able to help, but under constraint. But say, we'll be praying for you. I want to tell you, that brings tears to my eyes when I see that. And I don't say that lightly. I say it very sincerely. Shalom. God bless you. And uh, 
uh, hopefully I don't offend nobody by what I've said here this evening, but I'm just telling you from my heart the things that I see. God bless you. Good evening.